Hey y'all and welcome back to another video by Umbra's Darkness. In today's video, you guys, we're just starting day five. It's been about 96 hours since we've been on the island. And uh, I have five new things that I've learned in the first four days about this game. A little over four days about this new game feature. Um, hopefully this is of interest. If it is your type of thing, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button. A subscription goes a mile, miles for me, you guys. Uh, I apologize for no face cam. I'm really tired and I look like dog doo-doo. So hopefully you guys understand. Without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, uh, I have learned about geckos. They just unlocked today. Um, so I, again, all, all the events are time-gated. All of the new features are time-gated. Uh, one day, two days, one day. Uh, so Gecko is just unlocked and the next one is another day. Uh, that being said, I learned that geckos, if we go ahead and look at it, a gecko has resin or yeah, enhancement resin in it, right? So now you have another thing that's going to take 20 stamina, right? If I rally this, it takes 20 stamina. I have another thing that's going to take my stamina thing uh, kind of you know, showing that drastic void. And just to show you guys, uh, for those curious, lizards do not give resin. So it's not until the fourth day that you really need to worry about it. Um, you see the extra rewards are shared. I don't do uh, lizards at all yet. But if we look at a gecko, um, you do get creature remains. So there's five extra creature remains and a level 35 gecko. Uh, on top of the enhancement resin. So again, that's just another thing that's going to take stamina. On that note, with geckos, uh, another thing that I've learned is while uh, kind of falling into the same group of geckos, how am I going to get that extra stamina? How am I going to be able to do that on top of taking resource nodes, on top of doing 20 wild creatures, on top of everything else? Um, when starting a raid on a layer, um, if you rally... A layer, which I wish I could show you. I, I did it during the live stream. If you rally a layer, it takes five stamina. If you invade a layer or if you join a rally, it takes 10 stamina. So when initially hitting the layer, a strategy to save stamina is to rally the layer. It's the same kind of concept with rallying in order to invade to destroy durability. If you solo rally, don't let anyone else join your rallies. If you solo rally, you're saving five stamina each hit. You are taking an extra five minutes, but overall it seems to work pretty well. Um, Center for Ants, my alliance, doesn't really use this method very much. Uh, but other alliances have talked to us and have said that this is a method that works really well. Uh, there's pretty open dialogue in our server uh we're the server to be watched but we're pretty i mean we're pretty helpful and honest a lot of people teaching me about the game to try and be able to teach you guys so that's what i that's the first thing that i've learned uh in the first roughly 96 hours of being in the game all right the second thing that i've learned is that lost island eggs um have a note on it that says, after a period of time, some season special ants will be able to hatch out from supreme hatches. Uh, what this means for us is that uh, your tertiary eggs that everyone just used up, your tertiary eggs will have the potential to hatch season special ants. Now it says some season special ants. Uh, if I'm a betting man, it's going to be the universal season special ants. But it could be something different. You know what I mean? Like, I have no control over it. I have no knowledge. My recommendation is hold your tertiary eggs uh, because you're another, along with the what I've learned, is you're limited to only hatching 600. You're limited to only hatching 600 uh, lost special ants, uh, lost island hatches. So after 600, you just turn into a, a goose and you can't hatch anymore. Um, along with this hatching thing, uh, this lost island lucky hatch after the first hundred, uh, hatches of a lost island hatch, um, you will obtain an additional lost island special ant. 
However, this ability can only happen once. So it's only the first 100. It doesn't happen at 2, 3, 4, 5, or 600. It's just the first 100. Um, so, And everyone should get to the first 100 as a free-to-play player, um, assuming you have SVS double rewards open. So the second thing I've learned is hold your tertiary eggs because some season special ants will be there. Uh, yeah. On that note... Um, real quick. So I'm going to be honest. I have exactly zero idea what this says. I don't read this language. Um, but, uh, there is a tag here and they say, uh, translation. The question is season specialized ants in lost Island will hatch only in lost Island and not in, uh, and not in lost Island, but they will be born from orange eggs. I have now, right? So this is asking about the tertiary egg thing that I, we just talked about. Uh, and then the answer is they will only hatch from Lost Island specific eggs. And it says, can people who do not go into Lost Island use season special or season ants? And it says only some species will hatch normally once the Lost Island event is over. Uh, so again, this translation is rough. If anyone speaks this language and can maybe translate into a more fluid English language, um, the impression I get is that hatch ability from the what we just read is going to happen even hatch normally once the Lost Island event is over. Uh, do I know that that's when it's going to start? No. Do I know if this is the proper translation? No. But I'm just trying to share what I know in order to give some people some ideas. I don't want to hold anything back. Uh, again, my recommendation is to hold on to your tertiary eggs, your orange eggs until the until that area unlocks um we will hopefully get it two weeks before you guys and we'll be able to tell you what season special ants unlock and everything else um so until that period happens i would not use any more tertiary eggs if you care about the season special ants and i think they're worth caring about all right and the third thing that i learned about today uh, which is kind of in theme with hatching, but it's more of like how to get the eggs and stuff like that. So it's going to be the third item that I learned today is that free-to-play players will get 114 uh, eggs, which means that they lost island eggs or have the potential to get it if they try, um, which means they will get this 100 leaf clover activation. So I would like to do the math for you guys. Um, you unlock this at the beginning of day four. Uh, so that means that there are 41 days that this is active, right? Uh, and you get one free hatch every day with that. So again, that means that, or sorry, that's 42 days that that is active because you get it on, at the beginning of day four. So only three days have elapsed, right? So that's 42 from there. Uh, server versus server, chest number three. Um gives these selective egg chests. The selective egg chests give 50 fragments um, and 50 fragments or 100 fragments equals one egg. Uh, so that's 45 eggs because this does start at the beginning of SVS. You don't have to wait for, or at the beginning of the season, you don't have to wait for uh, it to unlock, hatching to unlock. So that's 45. That brings us up to 87 eggs uh, that free to play players will get. And then if we look at our season rewards, um, sorry, not season rewards at our season achievements, uh, there's one, two, three, four, none here, five, none here, six, seven, eight, nine. So on top of that 87 plus another nine, that brings you to 96. And then you have 18 more. You could potentially have more. Uh, you could potentially have more, but we're going to say safely uh, six weeks of force of nature to get to level 18 as free to play. Uh, and you get one tertiary or one lost island egg at level 12 and you get one lost island egg or two lost island eggs at level 18. So you do need to do some of the wild, uh, some of the hunt a bunny or whatever. 
Uh, but that's another three times six. That's 18. Uh, so 96 plus 18 is 114. Uh, so free to play players, unless there's a place that I've missed that free to play players get additional, unless like this pack shop event of Eva the Isles comes out and there's another additional one, free to play players get 114 eggs. Free to play, no no money spending. You just have to be active. You have to do your forces, etc., etc. Right? You have to hit those achievements and everything else. Uh, so what that means for pay to win players is if you're as active as free to play players uh, need to be, then you only need to buy 486 eggs. Uh, the pack shop, right? So. Uh, opened up yesterday live on stream, but the pack shop has is on a weekly timer uh, resets every week and uh, As you can see there's available limit your purchase is two and then the rest of the packs are three for eggs um, But there's also these small numbers no one can read and that's that available to purchase total in season is 20 so you need to hatch 486 other eggs uh, and you can only buy a limited amount. Uh, and then for these 30, 30 uh, eggs for 100 USD, it's limited to 10. And you can only buy two a week. So again, uh, the th all right, you guys, a couple of uh, additional things on the third thing that I learned. Uh, for the Lost Island eggs, you can purchase this pack right here. It's $10. It starts at the beginning of the uh, event. It doesn't start once hatch day starts. It starts at the beginning of the event. You can get seven eggs from that and you can buy it over the course of the six weeks, six and a half weeks technically. Uh, but the last one would be a little bit of a waste in my opinion because of, yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's another seven eggs that's slightly cheaper. It's the most efficient and cheapest pack. Uh, and then if we do look at the pack shop, Hatch day was yesterday, um, so the timer on it was six days total, um, right? So five days and some time when it opened up yesterday. So maybe these reset every six days instead of every week, uh, in which case we could make this plan a little bit cheaper in order to buy the 486 orange eggs. I just wanted to add those in there before people told me I was wrong. Third thing that I learned is how to gain Lost Island eggs and how many you need. All right, the fourth thing that I've learned uh, that is super important is uh, that I was wrong uh, in my last video on overlap. Uh, it is not as small of an overlap as I thought it was, uh, to put bluntly. I thought it was just one corner that needed to overlap. Uh, it's not... Based off of other games that are like this, in order to overlap properly, you need to take the amount of squares, which a tower is nine, uh, minus one, so that's eight, and divide by four, divide by two, so that's four overlap. So in order to be safe, you have to have four overlap, right? So there's uh, four here and four here. You don't have to overlap this way. You just have to overlap um, that way, right? So again, it's the amount of space minus one divided by four. So uh, that was incorrect information before. I thought it was just one overlap. It's not. Uh, I also learned in tower placement, right? So we did talk about this, but I learned just how critical it is, right? Um, a small mistake, right? So tip to tip is the most efficient and fastest way to place. A small t mistake like this uh, which someone in our alliance did after learning about tip to tip a small mistake like this prevented us from taking a layer until after reset because we needed more towers so one inefficient small mistake can prevent your alliance from getting a bonus even sooner right so uh, some alliances to combat this are going as extreme as one r5 two r4s and one trusted R3. And then in order to get maximum rewards, they'll restore R4s based off of Alliance contribution the last day of uh, this event. Just so that way everyone that did their best and tried their hardest are R4s. 
and get the higher rewards. Uh, but there's not too many cooks in the pot or cooks in the sh kitchen. So again, that one small mistake, one small mistake, someone like probably didn't mean to, maybe their thumb slipped when they placed, right? Uh, accidentally placed one small and we were one tile short. As you can see, we're, we're like overlapping by a significant amount. Um, all because of one small mistake. So, yep, if we would have been one more over, we would have been touching corner to corner with this layer and we would have been able to be good. Um, and then on the, the final thing about layers is that right now we have 9,000 tower or 9,000 clay, which a case costs 2,000 per tower. Uh, so this is four towers. You'll never stockpile on clay right now. Uh, we, we run out of clay every day. Um, so that's another part of towers that I've learned. Uh, and then the final thing of towers that I've learned, right? So this is all under like the fourth thing that I've learned about this event is that towers can be standalone and still be, be built off of, uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, so slim, uh, from slim from, uh, this Alliance, sorry, slim from Roy. Uh, helped us out on live. If you want to see like what I'm talking about, Slim from Roy helped us out. Uh, but as you can see, this is the Alliance safe house building. They're disconnected and it's still orange, even though it's a standalone tower. It's not connected to another layer. They still own the layer, even though it's not connected. You don't station troops in here. It's just the NPCs defending the layer, right? Um, you can still build off these towers. They're standalone, everything like that. So you could literally be at 298 towers and lapping back and forth to move efficiently across the map, right? Uh, when you come, when it, when push comes to shove, right? Um, so that again, just shows how important it is to properly overlap, right? So they are practicing here. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this is one too many overlap, right? But um, that that's where like the importance is and they're practicing and stuff like that. And then Slim again from Roy did this uh, test for science, uh, which was huge. I can't believe he did that. I can't believe they're willing to. Um, but now we know they're standalone. They don't have to be connected to anything. You can literally lap one over the other to build and layers don't have to be by themselves. Uh, and again, you don't station troops. I guess you can, you can do troop support, but you also have the NPCs, right? Uh, so that's like the fourth thing that I learned. The fifth thing, fifth thing that I learned uh, is honestly super important and is something that we need to push to change. Uh, if you want to message like the in-game GM or you want to provide feedback during like Discord Live, uh, that's where I'll be providing feedback. If you want to provide feedback in like, um, the form of a ticket. I don't know. I don't know the best way to provide feedback. There's like suggestions inside the discord, right? So one sec, there's like a season feedback, uh, channel. So if you're in the official discord and you look under lost Island, there's a season feedback channel. Um, and the, the, the number one thing, uh, that needs to get pushed I, again, across any platform you feel comfortable is the amount of resource consumption. So a lot of people did talk to me about it. I don't want to say that no one talked to me about it besides one person. A lot of people brought up the issues of resources and stuff like that. But Genesis, aside from server 18, uh, lines DEF, was in my DMs like, hey, you need to make a video about this. We need to fix this. This is not sustainable. Um, and I agree. Uh, some people, right, <laughs> are talking about like, they're down to, they started at a million or er, one B, right? One B honeydew and they're down to 350 mil. They're down, uh, you know, 400 mil honeydew already. They're down 650 in that example of honeydew, right? Um, because they're using enhanced, right? And so now they're swapping between enhanced and non-enhanced. Uh, so it's just not sustainable. This is four days in and we're already there. Uh, another thing to consider is that season special ants, or sorry, not season special and season 
uh, troop ants are going to take some sort of resource to heal, right? Uh, initially, because like the $5 pack and the $10 pack or $20 pack are honeydew, I would say that's going to take honeydew. So I don't know how much honeydew. I don't know if this will kind of like ease the burden, but the amount of resources to heal adequately is uh, unrealistic, we'll say. So I, I really think that that needs to get changed. I think it's something that feedback needs to happen. Um, and that's something that I've learned in the first 96 hours as we're taking, right? Cause everything deals damage, hitting a layer deals damage, uh, hitting a gecko, right? Hitting a gecko deals damage. And it's not a lot, right? 18,000, 5,000 troops. It's not a lot bads up, right? Um, hitting a hornet deals damage. Uh, obviously hitting a layer deals damage. Uh, hitting a layer deals damage when you're hitting troops. One sec. I intentionally hit a layer just for this video. See, hitting a layer deals damage when you're hitting troops, right? Uh, it doesn't when you're destroying... Um, it doesn't when you are destroying durability. But it does when you're invading against other troops. So, And then when you're hitting a resource node, it also deals damage. So, like... <laughs> Everything costs resources, uh, and it's just non-sustainable right now. There's no easy way to do it. And then you have evolution day, hatch day, build day, no farms. It's just, again, unsustainable. Um, and there's no, like, at the end of the week, you get all your resources back for healing or, like, what there is with kill event and what there is with war of the king. You don't get any of that back. You're just out of resources. So I really think that something needs to be done with resources the same way they did something with, um, like it is possible. They can do something. Cause if we look at the Alliance blockhouse, they created a rule just for the season lost Island, 300% faster, 30 minutes. They need to like cut healing resources down to 20% and speed down by 50% or something, right? Uh, so that way it can be sustainable and we can have a fun 40 day, 45 days. Um, unless, again, the season, season troop ants fix it. So, yeah, you guys. Thank you so much for the Patreon. Uh, my microphone is due to show up, like, Sunday. I think part of it's showing up on Friday and part of it's showing up on Sunday. Uh, so hopefully by the beginning of next week, maybe the middle of next week, because it'll take me some time to set it up. It's a SM7B, so it's like supposed to be the top of the line microphone for like streaming and recording to try and improve my sound quality, because it's all about the community, right, and making this easier for everyone. Um, a huge shout out to my Patreon for making that possible. I would have not been able to do it from just what I earned from YouTube. I don't make enough. I would not have spent my own personal money like that. Uh, the Patreon is what makes it possible. So if that's something you want to support, you want to support me being able to better my videos for the community, uh, please consider joining the Patreon. Again, if that's not for you, that's not what you like, please consider hitting the subscribe, the like. Uh, share these videos. I want to reach as many people before the Lost Island starts. Uh, try and get them to fill up their resources, try and get them to start invading farms with their pro uh, uh, to stock up honeydew. Like, if we get ahead of the curve now, they still have a week to try and get to where they need to be. So, anyways, y'all, you can catch me in the YouTube comments. I'm there. I try to be. I try to respond. Uh, or you can catch me on Discord. I'm the most active there. Uh I'm the number one talker on the Discord, but I try to respond as much as possible. Or worst case scenario, you catch me on server 260 or server 7. Until next time, y'all. Stay humble. Stay happy. Stay hungry. Bye, y'all.